All right, so I started here with my brush digital inking in Photopea. And I'm doing a technical line here that's only five pixels. And you can see how it does the curves for me. If I take that smoothing off to 0% and I try to do those same shapes, you're going to see how I waver a little bit, right? And they'll be a little off. So that's why smoothing is nice. The downside of smoothing is it can take a little bit longer for your line to process. So it might slow down your arc a little bit. You see how it kind of trails my my cursor a tiny bit, but it'll be much, much smoother. Now, by the end, I'm going to turn off my sketch and then turn on my white to 100% so I can see just my line art. And that's what kind of animated line art looks like. Very technical. But I don't really want that for this design. I want it to be more gestural. So at any time, because it's on its own layer, I can change direction. And instead, I'm going to use the pressure sensitivity on my brush. And I'm going to start my brush much bigger than 5 pixels. I'm going to start it about the size of a pencil eraser. So now when I paint, it can be much chunkier and it can go thin to thick. So that's why I said you're going to have to use the tablets today, even if you've never used them, because it's pretty darn important to have that pressure sensitivity for what we're doing. Also, if I don't want it to be rotated, I can just double click on that hand and I can change its angle slightly and I can use the space bar to move around. And it's actually not the best idea to be zoomed in too much. So even if you think you're at the right brush settings, you want to find the right angle for it, for what you're inking. And you want to find the right zoom level so you can kind of do it all in one pass with your tablet without um, cramping up or getting too stressed out. And you'll get the feel for it. So I'm going to turn my smoothing down a little bit because it's, especially in a program like um, Photopea, which relies a lot on running memory. I'm going to close my other programs. I don't need open. Because I don't want it to lag on me. Right. That's better. And you might do a few shapes and then decide you want to thin the line a little bit. Keep it at 100% hardness. Very nice. And the reason you have to make sure you're at a high enough resolution is it would be a real shame to spend all this time inking and then just have it be kind of stair-steppy because your resolution's too low. So I bit off a little more than I should have with that last line. So instead of just hitting Command Z and undoing all of it, oops, I'm going to cut it off using my lasso because this is also something we can do why is it giving me that there we go all right so how do i cut it off i see where that curve started to go awry and then i just lasso around it and these are just pixels, right? Delete, and then I can zoom in so I can keep a part of the curve. 
So a big part of inking, even traditional inking with an ink pen, with a brush, with a fountain pen, is enclosing shapes. So you can't always enclose the whole shape in one pass. So sometimes you have to go in and then you do little filler strokes like that. Think of making a speech bubble in a traditional comic. It's really hard to draw a perfect oval. And you don't always have stencils for every oval you would ever need at every size. So instead, how do you do it? You do one arc like that, and then you fill in with the rest. A little speech bubble. And then you connect the pieces, right? And then clean that up. Now with digital, it's a lot easier to clean it up than with traditional ink and white up. It's good to just breathe and try to get just nice, if you're going for clean line art, instead of really kind of sketchy line art, nice even strokes. It's what in the industry I've heard called the animator's line, which is different than a sketching line. And I tend to be more of a sketcher. So it's hard for me to slow down and just commit to a line quality. And we'll be able to tweak it and improve it before we turn it into a vector. Sometimes you want closed shapes, like a coloring book, like the whole beak is closed. But then sometimes you want open shapes, like this little inside of the mouth. Which has an opening there. So a nice mix of them it will be helpful. And then you can also use what you've learned in compositing because this is still raster imaging even though we're going to turn it into a vector. You can make a nice shape like that. In fact I might try that one again with smoothing a little bit higher and maybe the size a little bit smaller. It's like changing ink pen. You might make your shape and then we'll clean it up and then you can duplicate it. Copy and paste it, you know, use it multiple times. Just filling in that little gap. And then I can use my lasso, because this is 100% hardness, zero feather, right? Sometimes you'd use a one pixel feather and then just cut away from it. That's the whiteout. So now I can take that shape and I can lasso it. And then I can duplicate that, Command J, and then Option Command T. and use it like this. And then I can duplicate that, Command J, Option Command T. It's the reason we did compositing before this unit. Because all those compositing skills always come in handy. Even with vector line art. Right. Now the problem with that is the lines got thinner and thinner. Now maybe that's a problem, maybe it isn't, but how can I thicken those lines? They're on their own layers. What I can do is use layer styles like we did for it to color our logo and I can add a stroke. And that's all it takes. Add a stroke. That's all it takes. And then I can merge them all together. I'll put digital inking on top so that that is the name that's used for the combined layer when I merge them all. So now they're all in one layer again. So all these skills can help you with your digital inking. Now that I've got my layers set up, it's a good time to save it. So I'm going to save it as a PSD, and I'm going to save it with my 
name and semester code for assignment five. And it's breakfast cereal Nico. But this is no longer my sketch. I'm saving it as a PSD to my desktop. This is my line art. And then I can go to Canvas and I can post my sketch. And so there's my original one just for my pencil. And then there was the sketch that, oh, let me save it, that I have here where I messed with the proportions. So I'm just going to quickly save that as a JPEG, export it as a JPEG. And that sketch is the first requirement for this project. I went to downloads. There it is. Then I'm going to put that, ready to go, put that into Canvas. So I recommend everyone, as soon as you have a sketch that you like, maybe you've played with it a little bit in Photopea before you start digital inking, or even while you're digital inking, you can isolate it and then put it into Canvas. I'll accept either of them, but that's the one that's going to be more useful to you. Because that's the one that our digital inking will match. And I turn on my onion skin and I get back to digital inking. And anytime I need to save it now, because I've already saved it as a PSD, I just hit Command S and it will update it. All right. Back to the brush tool and our tablets. I feel for those of you who have avoided using the tablet all semester. Because you just need it now. It's a lot harder to do with just a mouse. my line a little bit. Now if you do this a lot, you can program your tablet to have different button keys. You can press the little button on the, the pen tool if you set that up so you get to these brush settings right away. It all becomes about efficiency and ease of use. Oops. And you can always hit Command Z. And then some of you are going to want perfect shapes. So let's say I wanted a perfect circle here. How could I do that? Well, I could go to my shape tools, my vector shapes. I can hold down Shift to get a perfect circle. But the problem is that circle is solid, right? So what I can do is make that circle white. But what can I do with a white circle? I can double double click on the layer and give it a stroke, just like I thickened those lines. I can give it a stroke on the inside. Woohoo. You see? And then I can use Option Command T and I can distort it. If I don't want it to be an exact perfect circle, so it has a little bit of perspective to it. Tug it up on this side. And you see that white is covering up my other inking edges, which is helpful. Then what can I do? I can rasterize it so that I can select just the black lines and duplicate those onto another layer and then option command T that to grow it 
set it on multiply mode so the 